Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Spring Farm. The photograph on the right was a reference for this painting. I decided to crop the composition, taking the tree all the way to the edge and off the edge. Normally, I would be hesitant to position the tree like that to avoid creating a tangent, but I feel that I've carried enough of the tree off the edge of the composition that it feels less like a tangent to me. This is a painting that's really about painting larger shapes. It's a very simple composition and you'll see as I move through the painting process that I'm focused on painting the larger shapes. I've done a light pencil sketch using a B pencil on an 8 by 10 inch sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So this is a fairly small painting and it's about the smallest that I work generally speaking. The sketch that I've drawn is primarily a sketch of the large shapes in the composition with a little bit of detail on the barn, but not much. So before I paint, if we take a look at the major shapes that I'll be looking at, you can see that as I take the end of my brush around this tree and go around the distant trees in the barn, I, then I'm outlining a large shape here that's the sky shape. And then I follow it down and there's a light rectangle there on the side of the barn. And there's some shadowed areas that I start to see as shapes. Same with the tree line in the distance behind the barn. I see that as a, as a big shape. And this tree is one large shape, as are the areas of the field. It's divided into a few different uh, uh, contours and sections. So. That's how I'm going to approach this as I begin to paint and start thinking about how I'm going to paint this. I'm not thinking about individual blades of grass and texture so much as I'm just thinking about painting the larger shapes. And that's going to be the focus of this painting. I'm going to begin by painting this large sky shape and I'm going to paint it with a fairly flat tone. I don't have a lot of clouds or anything in the sky. It's just a, a nice uh, even blue sky. So I'm using a mixture of cerulean blue with a little bit of royal blue in it, not much, and just a touch of raw sienna. And I, I add those just to, to take the, the, the rawness off the, the cerulean blue that's coming out of the tube. It changes it just a little bit. So my brush is saturated. I'm using the half inch brush. It's a flat brush, so it's going to give me a, a fairly clean edge as I go around uh, the edge of the, the building structure and the tree lines and take it down um, all the way down the, the, to the middle of the page there. And I'm going to take that wash around the buildings and basically to the horizon line and painting over the areas that will be the trees because I'm going to come back in and I'm going to paint that distant tree line wet and wet. I began my painting by painting wet on dry, so I haven't soaked my paper or anything. It's dry paper that I'm applying this wash to. But I'm going to come back into this while it's still wet and uh, paint some of that distant tree line with a different color. And on the left side, I'm bringing that wash right down through the tree that I've drawn because I know that some of that blue will be shining through that tree and the tree itself is going to be a very dark value so it's not going to matter that I've painted that as I have. Here I'm coming back with a mixture of raw umber with a little royal blue, a little touch of raw sienna. So the uh, a warmer mixture is towards the top right there that I've applied and you can see how it's a bit of a soft edge because I'm painting wet on wet. The paper's not soaked, it's, um, but it's still wet enough that I can apply this paint and not worry about a blossom occurring. I'm going to take this same color to the left side of the building structure. So you can see that that's a pretty rich raw umber uh, mixture that I've loaded my brush with. And it, again, it has a little bit of royal blue in it to, to cool it down a little. And I'll take some touches here and there of, 
some raw sienna and some burnt sienna but for the most part it's raw umber with a little royal blue and once again I'm going right through the tree on the left side there even though I'm going a little lighter than what I did right beside the barn but I know when I paint that tree that I'm going to be using a very dark value and you won't really see that I painted that except it will have just the suggestion that that tree line is running behind there and in the areas where I leave uh, openings in the foliage of the tree itself so I'm just going to paint the tops of a few trees there into what I've already painted I've completely dried my paper and I've painted basically three shapes at this point the sky shape and the two tree shapes, the distant tree lines on either side of the barn. Now I'm going to begin to paint one of the uh, fields. Uh, again, there's kind of like three large shapes that make up the, the, the foreground and the middle ground here. And as I paint this uh, area of the field, this is a, the plowed field and it's a, a gold tone. So I'm using yellow ochre and some raw sienna. And as I paint this, I want to make some brush strokes here uh, that will give the indication that there's some rows and, and it'll show the direction because of my brush strokes. However, this yellow ochre and raw sienna are going to be a little bit close. So I think what I'll do is I'll get this wash covered here. I'm going to come back in with some raw sienna and then I'll come back with a damp brush and I'll lift out some of the color to give uh, a lighter tone. Uh, and, but still, the direction of my brush stroke should help uh, with a suggestion that this is a plowed field and and they're all going in one direction here so I'm applying this uh, raw sienna at this point but it's really starting to diffuse and you really start to lose that uh, the direction of it so now I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm going to come back and I'm going to lift some pigment off my page this is still wet enough that I can do this however I can't have too much water in my brush at this point because while my paper is damp if I come in with a lot of water I'm going to start to create blossom so my brush is just damp and it's just enough to disturb uh, some of the pigment and allow me to lift a little bit of it off it's not a lot but it's just enough to help give the suggestion of those rows there in the direction that they're going and now that I've lifted some of that out I'm going to come back with a little bit more uh, raw sienna and I'm going to strengthen the contrast just a little bit and again I'm working wet and wet and my paper is damp enough and my my brush has about the same amount of moisture so I can paint this without fear of creating blossoms as I do this if I had a lot of water in my brush right now it would uh, come right off the brush onto the page and it would start to create backwash and blossom I'm going to take some of that tone and put it up to the side of the barn and as I've painted this you can see that I haven't been worried about painting individual blades of grass or briar or sticks or anything I'm just focused on the large shape but I've included some direction in my brush strokes to give the indication of the the plowed rows I'm going to insert the reference photo in the top left corner and it's a little hard to see because of the size of the image but there's a, a little stretch of a, a kind of a blonde colored grassy area where the winter has been the snow from the winter has been pressing the grass down and it's a lighter tone in the field or this area in the foreground so I'm using a mixture of yellow ochre with a little bit of raw umber and a little bit of royal blue just to cool down a little bit and it's got quite a bit of water in it so it's a lighter tone but I'm using this color to describe that area and um, again just so I'm, I'm focused on that that shape that's created by that one area of uh, kind of uh, wet wet grass that's uh, just recovering gonna be start to recover from the winter and if you look close in the photograph you can see there's some variation in this shape uh, it has um, a few darker values and it has a, uh, a redder tone to it. So I'm taking some burnt sienna and just touching it into the wash that I just applied. So it's still wet. I'm working wet on wet right now. 
and I'm going to take also just a few touches of a mixture with raw umber and just make some marks here to give the indication that there's some irregular surface here in this kind of grassy area. Next I'm going to paint this large shape in the foreground. I'm using a one inch flat brush and if you look in the photograph you can see on the left there's a shadow that comes into the composition. I'm not going to include that in my painting. I just think it gets the viewer wondering what's causing that. You know there's a tree or something there but I'm going to leave that out of my painting. And once again, I'm using a 1 inch flat brush. And don't forget, this is only an 8 by 10 inch painting. So it's a small painting. And uh, this 1 inch brush is fairly large for this size painting. So you can tell that I'm not trying to paint a lot of detail. I'm painting this large shape, but I am trying to create some variation of tone as, it, as I paint this. So, I started with a, a wash of yellow ochre and I came in with some sap green. I'm going to come in with a little uh, darker mixture of sap green and just create some modeling in my wash. But uh, I'm not paint, painting little, little blades of grass or sticks or anything. I'm just painting this large shape in the foreground. And I'm actually going to take a warm tone too, a little bit more uh, raw sienna and just touch uh, some of that into this wash just to create a little bit more variation. So I'm using this, this variation in my wash to give the suggestion of some changes in this this area but I'm not painting objects or grass or anything like that or creating a lot of texture. I've thoroughly dried my paper now and I'm going to start to do a little painting on the, the tree that I've drawn here and I'm using a, a very dark mixture. It's raw umber and royal blue. And I just have a number four round brush that I'm painting this with. And I'm also taking the same tone because it carries down into, there's a shadow here on the ground. And it it's all kind of comes together as one value and on one shape, even though it's a tree and a shadow. They're all the same value, so I'm painting it as one uh, shape. I'm going to take a half inch flat brush here with a mixture of raw umber and sap green. So it's very dark value, and I'm just uh, trying to give the impression of this big airy pine that's sitting here in the foreground. And as I said, I'm using this dark value, and I knew I would be using a dark value, so I wasn't concerned about painting uh, the areas in the background, the sky and the tree line right through the shape that I had drawn for the tree because any areas where I don't put this dark value that uh, background color is going to come through given the suggestion that it's in the distance behind this. And I'm just making some marks here and using the direction of my brush. I'm using a little bit of a uh, almost dry brush in some areas where it's uh, mostly dry just to create a little texture and just trying to create the feeling of this kind of airiness and I'm not again I'm not taking out a small detail brush and trying to paint pine needles I'm just trying to create the the suggestion of the shape of this tree Now I'm coming back with some of that dark value mixture that I used on the tree trunk and taking a rigger brush and just giving the indication of a few branches. So not a lot. I'm also using this just to make a few marks at the end of some of these edges to, to create the feeling of a, a little bit more of the airy pine on how it ends with the needles at the end of the branches kind of flare out. Now I'm going to take my rigger brush and I'm going to use uh, primarily raw umber and I'm going to paint these fence posts. They're a narrow fence post and I actually, the one I'm just painted, I added 
to my composition because as my photo was it only had two but odd numbers tend to be better designed so I added a third and you can see I have these at a variety of angles so they look a little different from one another and I've dried my paper once again and now I'm gonna come in I'm gonna to start to paint the roof of this barn and I've got a mixture of cerulean blue with a little bit of royal blue in it and some raw sienna and it's kind of a, a gray tone that I that I have here and then I'm uh, bringing in a warmer tone uh, so the same mixture but it has uh, more raw sienna in it to warm it up and I'm just mixing those colors up in the photograph there's a line that goes kind of through the middle of this roof and rather than paint around it I'm just gonna paint and then come back a little later and uh, I'm gonna lift it out so this is a it's a, a significant shape in the composition but it's a fairly small area you can see by my half inch brush um, a few brush strokes fills that area up so I'm not going to try and paint individual shingles, but I, I'm using my fingers there just to press into the wet paint just to create a little bit of texture for interest. I'm going to use the same mixture but with a little bit more water in it to lighten it up. I'm going to paint the, the tops of the, these other um, building features here. So just a light gray. Uh, on this this kind of uh, triangular shaped roof that sticks up and then same on the one that's behind uh, the main building there's a smaller building back there that has got a, a roof on it so I'm going to paint that I'm going to take uh, uh, a little darker mixture and uh, paint above where the, the, there's kind of a a line that goes to the roof there and I'm just using a darker value of the the raw umber with some uh, cerulean blue a little bit of royal blue but working primarily with some neutral tones here some grays and just given some uh, variation in the color uh, coloring on the roof and also creating some variation in value on that rooftop and now this this brush mark kind of goes under the area where the that center line is on the roof. Now I'm going to use a mixture of uh, cobalt blue with a little raw sienna in it. Not much, mostly a cobalt blue mixture and actually a little bit of royal blue but mostly 80 percent of the mixture is cobalt blue and it's a it's a middle value so I'm painting this area that's kind of in uh, shade and then there's a strong area of uh, that side where the the sun is coming around the the edge of the roof and it's creating an interesting pattern there so that bright white kind of triangular shape as a result of that sun hitting the corner of the roof and casting that shadow and I'm going to get the side of this building and really that's all kind of one shape comes together that whole shadowed area of all those the sides there the ends of the building and the side and then there's some of that dark value on this second building and just a little bit of a light left peeking through where the sun's hitting the side of that building. Now I'm going to take some of that same mixture. I'm going to paint the side of the barn. Uh, that And it has an area there that's cast in shadow. Once again, uh, there's an inter interesting angle that's created by the way the sunlight's hitting the roof there. So it creates this interesting shadow. And as that shadow comes across, it... it uh, it has a it's not a straight line on the bottom of it because there's a couple doors there and uh, there uh, there are different heights the, the the wall and the door so it creates uh, a lower line shadowed line on the the straight wall compared to where the door is because the door comes out a little farther so it changes where that shadow is at so that's the reason that's not a straight line going on the bottom of that 
Next, I'm going to take a dark value mixture of raw umber and royal blue. Uh, most of these areas where I'm making some dark marks are mixtures of royal blue, raw umber, and sometimes a little sap green put in, but um, that's primarily the dark value that I'm using throughout this composition. So I'm painting uh, some of the edges of, of those doors and uh, some shapes that are laying in front of the barn and uh, just give an indication of, of where some of the uh, variation in, in the, the, the edge of the, the side of that barn and some different areas on the structure itself. And there's a, a dark value shape there to the left. There's a, a wagon or something that's parked out front of this barn. It's very small. You can see I painted a window shape there, and just just the slightest of a of a dark value to give you an indication of uh, the the edges of doors or intersections or corners of the building. And uh, here there's a bit of a shadow, so I'm just giving the indication of the shadow using this dark value. I've inserted the reference photo once again in the bottom left corner so you can see how this is starting to come together. And up to this point, I, I, once again, I want to stress how I was just focusing on painting large shapes. And now I'm doing a little bit more detailed brushwork on top of it. But my whole focus int until this point was developing the larger shapes in the composition. I've dried it once again, and now I'm going to strengthen a few of the shadowed areas with a wash. And as I said, a lot of these dark values are just raw umber, royal blue. So I'm uh, strengthening that shadow line that goes right underneath the immediate edge of the of the roof there. But I still have that, that kind of a, a cobalt blue tone that's coming down below that. And the same on this other roof. And um, I'll catch the, the edge a little bit more there on the left side. Just a few more touches here and there where I just want uh, just another dark valued mark. And uh, I also want to take this value, this dark value, I'm going to give it a little bit more indication of uh, some tree trunks here in the, in the, the uh, distant tree line. So it's the same mixture, raw umber, royal blue, not, not uh, very, it's still medium, medium dark, but not uh, as dark as what I have in that for that, that pine in the foreground. So it's kind of a uh, medium dark gray. And I'm going to put a little bit more of that on top of this uh, tree here in the foreground. So these aren't near as dark as the initial marks I made in this tree. Earlier, I had mentioned that kind of seam that goes through the middle of the roof and I'm going to take some masking tape and mask that off and I always touch the masking tape to cloth before I do this so the adhesive isn't as aggressive and it's less, less likely to pull out paper. I'm going to take a uh, magic eraser, one of the Mr. Clean kind of sponges with water in it and I'm going to scrub this a little bit just to lift some of that paint. And then I'm going to take a tissue and I'm going to blot it with the tissue. And I'll take the tape off. So the, the line's a little wide and it has soft edges on it. So I'm going to take uh, some, my, I'm going to dry and take my paintbrush and do a little brush work. So I'm taking a dark mixture of raw umber and royal blue. And I'm just going to give a bit of an edge to this. And, um, Put a few marks to the, where the uh, lightning rods are. That one may be just a little too big, but if I try and do, remove it, it's just going to create a mess. So I'll leave it as it is and just accept that it's maybe a little big of a lightning rod on that left one. And this is a, a bob wire fence, so I'm going to take my rigger brush with just a light. Uh, touch. It's got a dark value but I'm just trying to use a, a, a light touch to just barely touch the edge of the paper 
and give the suggestion of that wire coming across between the, the fence post. And I want that to look like it's coming out the other side there behind that tree, so I'll put a few marks there. Even though this is a small format painting, as I'd mentioned throughout the painting process, I focused on the major shapes. I put a white mat on it to get a good look at it, and that's my painting, Spring Farm. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, check out my online learning center where you can find links to my YouTube channel, information about my workshops, and my online courses. And if you have any questions about my material, you can always go to the studio page on my website, rsortsart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrsortsart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.